Hi, I'm Igor, I'm a data science living in London, and in this video I'm explain to you what the exponential distribution is. This distribution appears a lot in machine learning, particularly for survival models and also churn prediction. So it's something definitely well worth knowing if you're a data scientist. The things we'll cover in this video are what is the exponential distribution, what are its origins, deriving of first principles, and how we can use it in Python. So let's get into it. So let's first begin with understanding what is the exponential distribution. So in a nutshell, the exponential distribution infers the probability of the waiting time between events. So it's just saying how long is until an event happens given it happens at a certain rate. A basic example would be uh, for the waiting time until someone makes a claim. And you can see why it's very useful for insurance companies because the, the, if they can know how long it takes for a customer to make a claim, they know how much premium they're making, so therefore they can better price a policy. Now, something is very useful to insurance. In fact, that's the whole business, predicting how much a customer is gonna cost them. And so the exponential distribution plays a critical factor in this big multi-glomerate uh, industry in the world. So to really understand the idea of waiting times when it comes from, we need to start understanding the Poisson process. So the Poisson process is linked to the Poisson distribution, which is a video I discussed in my previous um, video that you can check out and I'll link somewhere on the screen here. And a Poisson process is, is used to describe a counting process where the events happen at random but at given rates. So going back to our claims example, we may know that we get say five claims per hour, but we don't know when those five claims are gonna happen. So those five claims may happen right at the beginning, right at the end, or spread out evenly. The point is we know the rate, but not when they happen. And that's something known as a Poisson process. Now the Poisson process, kind of a hint to that recently, or just now, is that it's linked to the Poisson distribution. Again, I've done a previous video on this, but the Poisson distribution is essentially a distribution that measures, you know, given something occurs at a mean rate, what's the probability of some value occurring with it, uh, compared to that mean rate? So we'll go through an example in a second, but what the Poisson distribution looks like is this. So this is the Poisson PMF. So all it is, we have lambda, which is the expected number of events happening, and we have x, which is what we want to work out of how many, what's the probability of these number of events occurring. Here, e is Euler's number as normal, um, and x is the random variable, which is a Poisson linked distributed random variable. Here's a video, um, again, I'll link it somewhere on the screen here, that describes the Poisson distribution in a lot more detail. So feel free to check that out um, if you're unfamiliar with Poisson or you want to get a bit more understanding than we're just going into in this video. So let's go through an example of the Poisson distribution. So Poisson distribution is, like I said, it, it basically tells you if something happens to a mean rate, what's the probability if we get this many counts, given we have this mean count rate. So, Going back to our claims analogy, we have a time period of one hour and we expect around five claims per that hour. So what is the probability of there only being one claim? Well, in this case, we would have five is our lambda. That's the average claim. That's what we expect we get. Now, these expected claims we get in an hour. And we work at a probability of only receiving one claim in an hour. So in this case, what we do, we just sub in the numbers. So five is our lambda, one's our x. We sub this all into this formula here, which will be shown in the previous video. This is the Poisson PMF. And we get roughly 3.3% or 3.4% if you round, to, to round up. And so it's very, very small. So it's saying that given we have a mean rate of five, to only get one is very, very unlikely. And that's kind of what Poisson distribution is saying. It's just saying how likely is a certain number of events going to happen if we know it happens to a mean rate. Again, I've kind of reiterated that point many times, but that is the main gist of the Poisson distribution. And we can even plot the PMF as a whole spectrum of all the possible um, number of claims you can get. So in this case, we see here is a Python script. So what we've done is imported a Poisson function from SciPy stats. We've got NumPy and Maplotlib, which is our plotting function. We're then gonna treat X, which is the number of claims that can happen. So what we're saying here is that we wanna work at a probability or what the distribution looks like when we have one claim, two claim, three claim, all the way to 15 claims. We're then gonna pass this into the Poisson.pmf and then we're just gonna plot the results. Very simple. And this is what the result looks like. And as you can see, the most likely number of claims we're gonna get in the hour period is five, which makes sense because that is the mean rate. So therefore that's the most likely. And either side of that mean rate, we see here that, you know, we're very, very unlikely to get zero, bit more likely to get one, bit more likely to get two, and it slowly climbs up until five. 
and then you see it tails off again as we get to more extreme values. So basically, the more we get away from the mean rate, the less likely that counts is going to happen in that time period. Should be quite intuitive, makes sense to me. Again, check out the video um, if you're not following this too much and you can get more of a deeper understanding behind the Poisson. Now the point is, why are we doing this? Why am I talking about the Poisson distribution when this video is about the exponential distribution? Well, they are linked because the exponential distribution is kind of like the inverse of Poisson as the exponential distribution describes the waiting times between these events. So the, whereas the Poisson is kind of focused on how many events happen, the exponential distribution is saying, well, what is the duration between these events happening? What's the probability of the next event happening in this time period? So they're kind of the inverse of each other and they complement each other very nicely. So you can even derive the exponential from the Poisson. And how we do this is by starting with assuming that in a given time period, we've had no events. So in this case, you see here, x equals zero. So what we're, what we're saying here is that given we've had some sort of time period t go past, we've had no rates. So in other words, no claims have happened. So that's zero. And what this means is that for, what this means is that we get eta minus lambda. That's probability of getting nothing, zilch, in our in our rates or in our in our time period. Now, obviously, this is just for one time period, and we can generalize this to be t time periods. And all we do then is therefore multiply it by t. We're just saying that we haven't got any for this time period. What's probably getting for the next one and for the next one? And we're just saying until you know, and we have we're going to wait until t big t time periods to get the first event. So it's a bit of just an expression, mathematical sort of thing you can think about. Um, don't worry too much about it. It makes intuitive sense. Just go over your own time and I'm sure you kind of grasp the concept but all we're saying is we're going to wait a certain amount of time periods to our first event what's the probability of this happening it's just a mathematical expression don't think too much into it so what we are saying is that we have to wait t time periods in our claim analogy this is t hours until the first event claim occurs so going back to the claims analogy we're all going to wait t hours until our first claim occurs that's all this, that's all this expression means Again, not too complicated. Once you really think about it, I'm sure you understand it, it's quite intuitive. Then on the other hand, the probability that an event does occur within our time period is simply one minus this expression here, because you know it's probability sum to one. And this expression is also known as a cumulative distribution function, CDF. And a common result in statistics is that the derivative of the CDF is the PDF, the probability density function. And so by deriving it, what we get is the exponential distribution. We get lambda e to minus lambda t. So there we go. We've derived the, um, the exponential distribution PDF from first principles from the Poisson distribution. And it was that easy. It took us like four or five equations. Um, so it's really, really great. If you're, if you're kind of unsure about this process, rewind the video, go over it slowly. Um, again, like I said, it's not too complicated, but it does take some time to get your head around the steps we've done and to really grasp the whole process. Right, now we've derived the exponential distribution from scratch. Let's now show us an example of it. So <clears throat> let's go back to our claims example that we've done the whole video. We have five claims per hour. This means that on average, we have to wait 12 minutes for the next claim, right? Because we have 60 divided by five. And what this looks like is this. So here, all I've done is I generate a range of values of x so in this case, x is hours. So saying, you know, two hours um, is kind of our range. So zero to two hours, how was probability of waiting two hours until we get the next claim? In here, y is the PMF. So remember we had five mp dot xp, which is just the exponential function of minus five of x, right? This is just a formula we had here, right? What I've done is I've added it into this code and I've plotted the result. Now, as you notice here, remember the PDF is on the PMF. So the probability of zero is not actually 5%, right? Or 500%, percent that would be incorrect. Is you have to find the probability of something happening in the PDF, you have to integrate it because it's continuous. It's not a mass function. So if you want to answer the question, what is the probability that the first claim occurs in the first hour? We don't look at basically one and infer it like this. What we have to do is we have to integrate from zero to one. So in this case, zero to time one, one hour. 
and we see the result roughly if we integrate to the function as we normally would we get roughly 99.3 percent so what we're saying is it's very very likely that the claim will happen in the first hour which makes sense because we expect it to happen on average every 12 minutes so you see those kind of adds up so eventually we should get the first claim within the first hour by you know pure statistics or pure probability but there is a small chance that we may not get it you know 0.7 percent that we may keep on going but as you can see the more you integrate this line like if you go to two hours the bigger this number will get and obviously the integral under the whole pdf is one but you see here, what we're saying is the integral between like 0 and 0 0.5 is where the majority of the of the claim will happen. So again, the PDF, don't think of it as the PMF, like don't read off the graph. You have to integrate it to get the probabilities, um, which is kind of, you know, you got to make sure what plot you're reading and what it really says on the y-axis. For a Poisson, we could read straight off it because it's a mass function. But for the exponential distributions of PDFs, we can't quite do that same process. But the way you do it is by integrating like we've done here. Now, I hope that makes sense. Um, again, go through in your own time if you got a bit stuck, um, but it's quite intuitive once you get the hang of it. So thanks for you know watching this video and also sitting through my talk on exponential distribution. I have this, uh, this whole thing as a blog post. So if you wanna read it and digest it in your own time, then I'll, I'll leave this blog post in the description below. And yeah, I highly recommend you check that out because it'll give you another way of visualizing the whole thing. These are my socials, obviously YouTube, GitHub and X or formerly Twitter. Feel free to check me out there. And also I write a newsletter about data science every Monday morning that I'll go right into your inbox. That's also linked in the description below. So make sure to check that out. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.